Honestly, I have no limit when I get angry. And like, obviously he said that I need help with that. Because people are generally saying to me, one of you are going to end up dead. Like, and I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him if he hurts me again. And, or I'm going to end up being in prison. But I don't believe a word that comes out of that boy's mouth. I have to beat the living daylights out of him for him to tell me the truth. And he still don't tell me the truth. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm going to kill him. Like when I get a knife out. Like when I stab him. Like, oh, I just, I just don't get this kid. These events took place two years ago and revolve around a 24-year-old OnlyFans model. It's yet another example of how the reality presented online can differ greatly from real life. If you're interested in the details of this story, stay tuned. Abigail White was born in 1998 and grew up in Bristol, England. Unfortunately, her childhood was far from happy. Her father was abusive and Abigail frequently witnessed the psychological and physical violence he inflicted on her mother. Her parents eventually divorced, but sadly, Abigail's life was still marred by violence. She moved in with her mother and soon afterward, her stepfather joined the household, but he turned out to be abusive as well. When he and Abigail's mother had a child together, the man began to abuse Abigail, including sexually. The abuse was eventually discovered and Abigail was placed into foster care. There was hope that her situation would improve, but the trauma she had experienced deeply affected her. She struggled with school, had severe anger issues, and was easily provoked, reacting with aggression even in minor situations. Everything had to go her way, or she would fly into a rage, likely due to her fear of rejection. This behaviour ultimately led to her expulsion from school, and she continued her education at a school for students with behavioural issues. During this time, she lived with her grandmother, but her grandmother couldn't manage Abigail's behaviour, so she eventually moved in with her biological father. By then, she was 13, and her life had been filled with trauma and rejection, with no sign of improvement. Her father was an alcoholic, and although Abigail sought therapy to cope with her emotional wounds, she eventually started drinking and became addicted to cocaine. As she later said, it was the only thing that made her feel happy and escaped the nightmares that plagued her every day and night. Over the next two years, she attempted suicide twice. At 15, she met her first boyfriend and the relationship was a brief respite from the difficulties she had faced throughout her life. For the first time, she felt happy, but the relationship ended after seven months and Abigail returned to her destructive habits. Her next relationship was far from happy. She got involved with a 29-year-old man when she was just 16. Two years later, after turning 18, the relationship ended and Abigail left foster care since her father was obviously unfit to care for her. She moved into social housing, where for the first time in her life she had a stable home and some sense of security that had been missing since childhood. During this period, she reconnected with Bradley Lewis, who was two years younger than her. They had known each other from school, but it wasn't until years later that they renewed their friendship and became a couple. Soon after, they welcomed their first child, and over the next five years, they had three children in total. At the time, Abigail was only 23, and Bradley was 21. The family lived in Bristol. Brad worked as a floor installer, and Abigail stayed home with the children. However, living on a single income proved challenging, so Abigail began looking for work she could do from home. Eventually, she turned to online modelling and created an account on OnlyFans where she started working under the pseudonym Fake Barbie. Her venture was a success. Abigail shared photos and videos, earning an impressive £50,000 in her first year. While her earnings later declined, it still provided a significant boost to the household income. Although their financial situation improved, Abigail and Bradley's relationship deteriorated. Constant arguments, breakups, and reconciliations made their relationship highly toxic. They even resorted to physical violence at times, and both were unfaithful. Despite this, neither was willing to leave. 
It's also worth mentioning that Abigail's aggression wasn't limited to Bradley. She was violent towards strangers as well, with substance abuse only worsening her behaviour. On one occasion, she severely beat a woman in a nightclub bathroom because she thought the woman looked at her the wrong way. Abigail was arrested for the assault and sentenced to 12 months of community service. She could be unbearable at times. Everything had to go her way, and she would issue commands to Bradley with severe consequences for disobedience. She also demanded constant attention and proof of affection, whether through gifts or verbal reassurances. For the most part, Abigail and Bradley spent their time fighting, which had a negative impact not only on them, but also on their children. Looking at the situation from the outside, the only logical solution seemed to be breaking up. However, the couple didn't consider this option for a long time. Both regularly cheated on each other, even though their relationship wasn't supposed to be open. At the same time, they were both jealous and upset by the other's infidelity. Abigail demanded instant replies to her messages, as any delay made her assume that Brad was with another woman, all while she herself was also seeing other men. It wasn't unusual for them to participate in group sexual encounters as well. To call their situation complicated would be an understatement. The relationship was pure chaos. Things reached a point where, while Abigail was pregnant, Brad cheated on her and impregnated his mistress. There was a time when he was expecting children with two women simultaneously. Unsurprisingly, this only fueled Abigail's rage, and after Brad's child with the other woman was born, their relationship became even more toxic. Friends and family urged them to separate before it was too late. Abigail's parents despised Brad, knowing about his infidelities and the inappropriate messages he had sent to their other daughter. On the other hand, Brad's family didn't like Abigail either, especially after one of their violent arguments, during which Abigail stabbed Brad in the leg. Although the injury wasn't serious, it left a scar. It's hard to understand why this wasn't the final straw for their relationship. Meanwhile, because of Abigail's assault on a stranger in a nightclub, social services got involved. A welfare check was ordered to ensure their three children were living in suitable conditions. During the inspection, it was determined that Abigail and Brad were in a toxic and potentially dangerous relationship, and they were advised to live separately. To prevent their children from being taken away, Brad temporarily moved in with his mother. This separation was the first time in years that Brad experienced life without Abigail. He started seriously considering ending the relationship. When he told Abigail about his thoughts, she didn't take it well and threatened to do anything to keep him. She began threatening to take her own life, which, given her history, wasn't an entirely empty threat. Whenever she sensed that Brad was pulling away, she would invent new threats. She said she would kill the women he had cheated with, the mother of his fourth child, his own mother, and finally, Brad himself. Because you think by you saying I'm fat. By early 2022, Abigail's chaotic behaviour continued. She started posting offensive content on TikTok, publicly airing the details of their relationship. She slandered Brad and even described violent acts she had committed against him. Brad felt trapped in the relationship. He was fed up with the instability and constant humiliation, but was afraid of what Abigail might do if they officially broke up. He confided in friends that he feared for his life and the safety of his loved ones. Despite this, they stayed together, and in March 2022, 24-year-old Abigail found out she was pregnant again. She had no doubt that Brad was the father, but Brad wasn't so sure. On March 17th, Abigail searched for information about miscarriages, and the next day she decided to terminate the pregnancy with professional help. Brad supported her after the procedure, though it wasn't a joint decision. On March 19th, 2022, Abigail and Brad had another serious argument, during which she accused him of cheating. The fight escalated, and Abigail stabbed Brad again, this time in the arm. He had to go to the hospital, but although the injury wasn't severe, he didn't admit that he'd been attacked. 
Instead, he claimed it was an accident. Around this time, Abigail messaged a friend, saying that things between her and Brad were so bad that she feared she would end up either dead or in prison. She openly admitted she had no doubt that she could take Brad's life. On March 25th, 2022, the couple met in a park to have a serious talk, with Abigail bringing along a friend. During the meeting, Brad informed her that they needed to break up and that this time his decision was final. Surprisingly, Abigail took the news calmly. There was no typical outburst of anger. It seemed as if she had also come to terms with the decision and realised that breaking up was the only way they could both find happiness. Later that same day, they arranged to meet again, this time at a pub, with close friends also attending. Abigail brought their three children along. They had planned to meet at 5pm, but Brad was running late. By 5.30, Abigail had begun sending him a series of unpleasant messages. It didn't help that by this time, Abigail had already been drinking, which, as usual, worsened her already fragile emotional control. Additionally, she had taken illegal substances. Brad eventually arrived at the pub at 7pm, by which time Abigail was already shaking with rage. She was convinced he was late because he had been with another woman. The 22-year-old went to the restroom with his friend to talk and mentioned how powerless he felt in the situation, saying he no longer knew how to make Abby see reason. When the men came out of the restroom, Abby was waiting at the door. She immediately started yelling, accusing them of talking about her, and then attacked Brad in front of the pub's patrons. A fight broke out, or rather, it was a one-sided assault. Brad's friend tried to break them up and calm the situation, but Abby spat in his face. Fearing for their own safety, Brad's friends left the pub. Brad and Abby attempted to reconcile, but Abby could not calm down. Brad ordered three beers, which Abby knocked off the table and onto the floor, once again drawing the attention of the other customers. The situation had long since spiralled out of control, but it seemed to be getting worse with every moment. When strangers tried to intervene, Abby attacked them too. At one point, Abby threw a drink and spat in a man's face. In an attempt to restrain her, the man pushed her and she fell to the floor. Abby then called the police to report an assault, conveniently omitting the fact that she had provoked the situation. All of this unfolded in front of her young children. Just before 8pm, Abby and Brad left the pub with their kids, and a friend they met outside gave them a ride home. At one point during the drive, Brad said, I'm already dead, referring to the fact that when they got home, he would be in deep trouble. In hindsight, those words are chilling. As soon as the couple stepped through the door, a fierce argument erupted. Abby blamed Brad primarily for not defending her strongly enough against the man she claimed had attacked and beaten her in the pub. At one point, during the heated argument, Abby went to the kitchen and returned holding a knife. For Brad, this was a familiar sight. It had ended with scars before, but this time was different. Without hesitation, Abby plunged the blade into Brad's chest. Their three-year-old son witnessed this horrifying moment. Hearing the shouting, he had quietly come downstairs unnoticed. Meanwhile, both Brad and Abby were in shock. They stopped arguing, unable to believe what had just happened. Brad was losing a lot of blood and eventually staggered into the kitchen, where he collapsed onto the floor. Instead of calling for help, Abby, fearing the consequences of her actions, began cleaning up the crime scene. When Brad took off his shirt to assess the wound, she immediately put it in the washing machine and started mopping up the blood from the floor. Abby had injured Brad twice before, but this third time was different, and she knew it wouldn't go unpunished. The injury was too severe. Around 8pm, their neighbour Laura heard the screams and rushed over to check what was going on. She found Abby completely distraught, wearing a pink dress with a bruise on her left arm. However, there were no visible bloodstains on Abby's clothes. Brad, meanwhile, lay unconscious on the kitchen floor. 
Abby told the neighbour that Brad had stabbed himself and they needed to call an ambulance. As Laura dialed emergency services, Abby kept touching Brad's face, repeatedly saying, I love you. Don't leave me. Stay with me. I love you. Laura suspected that Brad was already dead, but when she checked for a pulse, she found shallow breathing and began performing CPR. The emergency operator guided her over the phone, and she started pressing on Brad's chest wound. She noticed that very little blood was coming from the wound, which worried her, as it could mean internal bleeding, or that his body had started to shut down. Laura tried to put Brad in the recovery position, but was unable to. Around 8.22, her husband returned home and heard alarming noises coming from the neighbouring house. He also rushed over and found his wife attempting to revive Brad, so he took over the task. By the time the police arrived at 8.48, Abby had already called her friend in a panic. She hysterically told her friend that Brad had hurt himself and tried to take his own life. She begged her friend to reassure her that Brad would be okay. Shortly after, paramedics arrived and the 22-year-old was taken to the hospital. He was immediately brought into surgery, but unfortunately it was too late. He had suffered a deep stab wound to his chest. The blade had penetrated over seven centimetres and had pierced his heart. After several hours, doctors pronounced him dead. Abigail White was arrested, but during her interrogation she insisted that Brad had stabbed himself. Her version of events was very chaotic, with key details constantly changing, such as who had grabbed the knife first. Initially, she claimed that Brad had brought the knife from the kitchen, but later she said she was the one who had it first, and Brad had wrested it from her and inflicted the wound himself. Later, she started claiming that she was holding the knife, but Brad had grabbed her hand and guided it to make it look like she was the one who stabbed him. The key details kept changing, as if Abby was trying to piece together the most favourable version of events for herself. What she didn't account for was that the murder had been witnessed. Her three-year-old son had unfortunately seen the whole incident, but was able to give testimony that incriminated Abby. Despite his young age, he managed to tell investigators that Mommy stabbed Daddy. The evidence was overwhelming, leaving Abigail no room to continue denying what had happened. Eventually she confessed the truth that everyone already knew. However, she claimed that she committed the crime in a fit of passion, insisting she hadn't intended to harm Brad and acted on a sudden impulse. It's also worth noting that Abby didn't call an ambulance while Brad bled out on the floor. She claimed that she had tried to call but couldn't get a signal, which is why she began shouting for help. Despite this, Abby sought to have the charge downgraded from murder to manslaughter. During the investigation, it was discovered that in the weeks leading up to the attack, Abby had searched online for how to tie a noose and whether it was possible to die from a broken heart. Around March 17th, about a week before the murder, she had also searched for information not only about miscarriages, but also about stabbing incidents. In October 2022, her trial began at Bristol Crown Court. After reviewing evidence, including surveillance footage from the pub, social media posts and voice messages Abby had left for friends, as well as hearing testimony from over 200 witnesses, the court rejected her plea for manslaughter. Abigail White was ultimately sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole after 18 years. Psychiatrists who testified during the trial agreed that she suffers from borderline personality disorder, which stems from a difficult childhood marked by abuse from her stepfather. Currently, she remains in prison and, as reported, is in a relationship with a new man, actively seeking approval for conjugal visits. It's difficult to say whether Abby truly intended to take Brad's life. Most people believe she did, but only she knows the truth. What is clear is that she wasn't mentally stable, and on top of that, she was under the influence of substances, which likely impaired her awareness of the consequences. I'm the father of Bradley Lewis, and I'd like to read his following statement outside the Crown Court today. Being you're talking to you today, 
is something that you never expect to happen to your family. But now that it has, being the kind of person I am and the remainder of Brad's family, it puts into perspective what other people go through and my thoughts, as I always have, reach out to them. I do not feel that we have received justice as we have got ourselves a life sentence. Brad's death had brought so much sadness, not just to his family, but the many people that knew him. Proof of this was shown by the hundreds of people that attended his funeral and events that were arranged in his memory. His popularity has also been shown by the memorials that are on display at various locations in South Gloucestershire. We are in a sense lucky as a family to still receive overwhelming support from everyone that knew Brad, Rachel, I or any other members of our family. And we thank those people for that. That's in a sense over the line for the prosecution. There's so much has obviously gone on and it's going to be something that we're going to find very, very difficult to overcome. We also would like to thank, although we may have had our ups and downs, social services, Tra Tracy and Tom, um, who, at the end of the day, have secured the fact that my grandchildren, Brad's children, will all be looked after until at least they're 18. And rightly or wrongfully, I have to thank Sherry and Tony. I know that's Abby Dawes' mum and stepfather because they're the ones who have taken on the children and in the future they will be ensuring that I spend time with my grandchildren which is going to be a great memory as will Rachel which will be a great memory for us of our son. Brad would now be saying that's enough now dad just shut up and my famous saying I reply was that's my boy talking. Thank you all very, very much. If there are any questions, I'll see if we could just, possibly answer them. Just, just, get, just if you can, try and sum Bradley up. What kind of a man was he? A man to be proud of. Loving, thoughtful, loved his family, loved his children, loved, unfortunately, the woman that ended up taking his life. But he was... He'd do anything for anybody if he could. And that is shown by his popularity. You know, the number of people have been in touch since what's happened to Brad. And those people are still grieving today. And that is because of what a popular, thoughtful, helpful person that our son was. And as far as we're concerned, he still is. Please share your thoughts on this story in the comments below. Thank you for listening to the end. Until next time.